Hi everybody, my name is Jeremy, this is Red Means Recording. Today, pretty simple video, we're gonna talk about envelopes in Eurorec, um, and I guess beyond Eurorec, but mostly focusing on the 4MS Dual Envelope VCA. They sent over this little baby version of it as well for me to beta test, basically uh, give them feedback about the slope settings and some of the other stuff. And uh, since I have this here, I'll just talk to you about envelopes, what they are, what they do, and what controls you might want to look for when purchasing an envelope generator. And uh, we have two modules from 4MS. We have the little envelope VCA and we have the dual envelope VCA. There might be another one too, but um, these are the ones I sent over. Hey, future Jeremy here. I'm going to have a few corrections as we go through, and this is the first one. There is a third unit from them. It's the dual shaped envelope VCA. It is the big daddy of all three of these things with all the features. I'm showing it on screen now. You can see that we have a variable shape from full exponential to full logarithmic. Um, we have all kinds of other stuff on here. So yeah, uh, this third one will be available as well, um, hopefully around the same time that these are. So uh, what these are are a rise fall envelope um, with an envelope level control. And not just that, they act as VCAs too, which is really, really, really good. I love things like the Javelin or the old uh, WMDSSF uh, ADSR VCA. I know there's a lot of letters next to each other. But basically what this means is um, you put your audio in and a trigger or a gate signal in the case of the Javelin, and it creates an envelope and also applies that to the internal VCA. So you don't need an external VCA. It's a great way to build voices in your system if you want uh, and need just like a simple envelope generator that also has a VCA. Um, the other great thing about these, and like the Javelin, they have an envelope out, which means that the voltage that is created for the internal VCA can be passed on to something like a filter. And if any of you have ever used a real synthesizer, that's not modular, um, you'll know that uh, the filter generally gets an envelope too. So this is a really fantastic way to be able to do that. Um, a lot of the envelope generators I have, I'll either molt them up to go to the VCA and the filter at the same time, or um, you know, I'll use something like this and then I won't have to. So pretty cool. What's the difference between these two? Well, um, they both have rise and fall controls. They both have the slow, medium, fast uh, for the full on range, kind of like the Nano Quart. They both can cycle. If you push this, it will loop, which is really nice. And we'll talk more about that later. Um, so we got these sliders for rise and fall. Uh, we have an envelope level control. This is really cool. I haven't seen this um, in Javelin. There's a button for uh, in Javelin. Actually controls the amount of envelope uh, going on, including the envelope out. Over here, the slider unfortunately is replaced by these little pots, but we do gain an offset control, and I'll explain what that is in a smidge. Here's our trigger input, the follow input. I'll talk about that a bit later. Um, we have a cycle input, which will take a gate so you can turn cycle on and off, a bit like how maths works, which is really great. Our envelope out we talked about, and this right here is an end of rise output, which is usually a little trigger. Hey, it's Future Jeremy here. Here's a little correction. I mentioned that the end of rise is usually a trigger, uh, in the case of these modules, it's a gate that lasts for the duration of the fall stage rather than being a trigger. So uh, just keep that in mind. It's a gate that will stay high as long as the fall stage of the envelope is in play. You can see that we have an end of rise and an end of fall here. And anyone that's used Rampage or uh, Maths will be familiar with that. And you'll see these in action when uh, we start started playing some stuff. So why don't we do that right now? Okay, let's do that. I'm going to throw this out the window. So without further ado, I'm going to hit play. And you can hear the two oscillators of our clavis twin waves going into A and B, respectively. Uh, the envelope outs of those are going into our data section over here with Mordax Data, the O tool, um, and the Glitch 3 from Paratech. Um, the audio output of the twin waves is going into Blades because I want you to hear what an envelope does to uh, the filter. And there's just something really nice and pure about just a, a good sounding oscillator into a good sounding filter. So. Let's start in fast mode down here. You can hear automatically that our envelopes get very, very tiny compared to that. So if I start to uh, bring up the fall, you can see and hear now that we have envelopes. One of the really, really good things about this is that they are plus 10 out, which is super, 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 super important to me. Uh, at least that's what the O tool seems to suggest. Um, and that means they will open up blades all the way. Some filters need a plus 10 envelope to really work. I think blades needs a plus eight. So that's really, really good. All right, uh, let's bring up the rise. You can hear that little tiny bit of rise there. 
Uh, you'll see over here that these seem to be completely linear, but they sound really snappy to me, and uh, that's usually an exponential thing, which I don't really quite understand if my ears are just broken, but basically that triangle going down is completely a uh, straight diagonal line as opposed to something with a bit of a swoop to it. So uh, just keep that in mind. If you prefer linear uh, or exponential, this will be uh, linear. Hey, it's Future Jeremy here. Here's another little correction. Actually, it's more just like a little tidbit. So I mentioned that these uh, envelopes feel exponential to me, and um, they're obviously not. We've been looking at them on data, and the reason that they probably feel exponential is because the VCA itself is exponential. And that's not something that's evident from the front panel, but what that means is that while the control voltage that is happening here uh, is logarithmic, the VCA itself responds exponentially. And that's what I think is giving these that real snappy feel, and I, I love it, it's great. Let's switch to medium. First, on the fall. And now we have much longer range. At this tempo, we can open it up all the way. So this is a great time to bring the filter down. Go ahead and turn all of our attenuators down. All right. So uh, here comes that relationship of uh, envelope to filter. And you're going to hear a pretty traditional sounding synth voice thing happen right now. So I'm going to turn the attenuators up here. I just, it's just such a juicy filter. It's so good. Okay, so as we increase this. Now, we have the rise, which is this portion right here, on uh, fast right now. And uh, at the time of this recording, fast is the only way to get a completely almost uh, zero uptime on that uh, rise. You can see there actually is a tiny bit of up there. It's not just like zero. It's just to be expected, you know, time exists. But let's just the medium, and I want you to hear how we get this tiny bit of extra flub at the beginning, which I find really, really attractive. Here we go. Hear how now at the beginning of the envelope it goes whoop. So what this is actually doing is, and I'm gonna switch this to slow so you can hear this, what this is actually doing is changing the time scale of the envelope completely. And it's a little strange, honestly, because um, the court doesn't do this. But like, basically, what will happen here is if I turn it to slow, you can hear now the attack is much longer, even though it's all the way down here. So uh, I'll put a disclaimer on screen if that's something that gets updated uh, or if that's its inherent behavior. But one of my favorite places to put this is in the medium medium. So we can get that little bit of whoop. This sounds really, really good. When I hooked the filter up and turned the, the frequencies down, we had to turn these attenuverters up all the way in order to get uh, any kind of a signal because the filter is now all the way down and we had to turn up the amount of control voltage going to the filter. Well, these actually have a level control on them. And if you recall, did I throw that out the window? I did. Uh, if you recall, we have this nice slider here for the envelope level out. Here, it's with these little pots. So many modules don't have attenuverters on them for their uh, incoming CV modulation. Almost every filter does. However, it's really nice to have that available. So um, what we can do here is do this again. And listen what happens when I turn this down. Pretty much the same effect as turning these down. So you have two places that you can use them and if uh, you can do that effect and uh, if your uh, like voice or if your effect that you're going to with this envelope doesn't have attenuators, now you can have that. So it's a very nice feature to have on here. I have not really seen it with a uh, continuous control like that before. Next up is offset. So what this is gonna do is basically going to either raise or lower the whole voltage floor. And you can see right here on data, we're at zero, that, that bottom floor there in the middle, that's zero volts going up from that. So check out what happens with offset. So we're raising the floor, lowering the floor, lowering the ceiling, excuse me. So the relationship between your control voltage affecting your cutoff frequency, uh, the envelope of it, really, really, really important. You don't want to always just have full, uh, full voltage range going directly into your filter because it'll be this 
really bright, really bright thing. We want to get that cool squelchy sound, right? So that's the basic controls. We can also cycle. So now this function generator, or envelope, will just repeat. And this is especially cool when, let's say you pull out these triggers here. Now, we can get independent of uh, any note value, which is, I think, really nice. Okay. Actually, we want to go... Yeah, that's fine. We're going to leave these out for right now. Uh, we have time CV here. So uh, we can actually, like Maths does... Um, actually, it's more like Rampage, because Rampage only has a... Let's see. Oh, no, it has individual rise and fall CV. Uh, so we have one input here, which will then offset the, uh, the speed with modulation. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. There we go. There's something cool. This is great for ambient and stuff like that, where you're able to actually um, mess with the envelopes themselves. So very nice to have on here. I've put some reverb and delay on this in post so you can hear what this sounds like. And if I add some more notes... down. Look at something kind of pretty. At least I think it's pretty. And we can make it weird again if we want. can hear that we're getting to almost audio rate. That's where that alias is coming from, which I think is super cool. All right, so check this out. One thing, thing you can do is take CV out and put it in here and step sequence this. So we'll go over to our CV control here. Go ahead and step sequence it. So what we're doing is we're step sequencing the rise and fall, which I think is pretty cool. Now, if you don't have cycle on, it's actually also still pretty cool because you can create modulation on your rise and fall, which is, I think, really neat. It's always nice to have uh, independent control over rise and fall. However, it is what it is here. So if I increase the probability of these notes over here, you'll hear it a bit more. the follow. So the follow will actually take an incoming signal and apply it to what's going on in here. So I'm going to take those same two CV in and outs, and you can hear that it's really static right now. Let's go ahead and put these in. So now this uh, control voltage is modulating the internal level of our uh, envelopes. And then we can do this with all kinds of stuff.
Modulation is everything in your rack, and I think it's very cool to get so much out of a single envelope generator. End of rise is the end of our rise here. End of fall is the end of fall. These can be used to do all kinds of interesting little things, um, albeit uh, I don't really use them all that much. Um, <laughs> they're not really my main uh, jam when it comes to this stuff, but uh, at very slow rates, they can be used for uh, doing switching on other things in some cases. You can actually use them to trigger an LFO or time an LFO. And because they're related to the speed of all this stuff, you can get some very interesting stuff out of them. All right, so just to recap, envelopes. They create control voltage that can be used to control usually, well, anything <laughs> in your rack, but traditionally volume. Uh, they go to filters. Um, they're really great on FM stuff. Um, they're just a very useful type of control voltage that is inherent to every synthesizer that, that you've ever used, probably. A VCA is something that uh, takes an incoming signal and lets you bring it in and out in terms of volume with control voltage. And that's built into here. So one of those things that we just need when it comes to uh, synth voices. And uh, being able to change the outgoing level offset and modulate the rise and fall with CV are all really, really great things. So overall, if this was a review, I'd say fantastic job with this. Um, my only weirdness with it is the fact that, like, it's impossible to get... <laughs> it's impossible to get a zero amount of rise on the, uh, on the slow setting. Though I really do like that tiny bit of whoop on the medium setting. And I do really miss the slider here for envelope level. But, you know, all in all, good shit. That's about it. Thanks again for watching. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording, and I hope you have a very envelopey day.